welcome to the fourth day of Design Week Philippines. So wherever you may be joining us, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Mia Portugaleza from Fringe and Pineapple Lab, and I am very excited to welcome our panelists in today's session, Together Apart, Discovering Art in a Digital World. Our first panelist is the Deputy Director General for Museums, National Museum of the Philippines. She leads on the research, development, museology, and technical assistance work at the museum. As the Chief Curator and Head of Collections Management, she ensures that the National Collections is accessible and that audience engagement programs are developed across all flagship and regional national museums in the Philippines. She is a social anthropologist and museologist and was a British Council Fellow back in 1990. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Ana Maria Teresa Labrador. Now, our second panelist is the founder of Gugma Gaia, which is a collective led by passionate volunteers who collaborate with environmental advocates and artists. He is an independent, multidisciplinary artist and community artivist or artist activist. He works with repurposed textiles combining art and environmental sustainability in his creative process. He is a Southeast Asia Delta fellow in 2019 a program co-created by the British Council and Mekong Cultural Hub. Also, he will be part of Future Leaders Program by the Australia Council for the Arts. Let us welcome to the digital stage, Razgal Jan Raz Salvarita. And lastly, our moderator for today is a collection manager from the British Council. She is responsible for management, collection care, and access of British Council collection. She has worked on various collaborative visual arts exhibitions and programs, including Museum Without Walls digital exhibitions in Turkey and Perception Touring exhibition in Western Balkans. Live from overseas, we have Nicola Heald. Okay, so before we move on, let me discuss briefly the flow of the session. Nicola will present first the virtual exhibition, Together Apart, Art World Voices That Connect Us Now, through a quick introduction and virtual tour. Then she will be in conversation with Dr. Labrador and Raz during the panel discussion. We'll end today's session answering questions from all of you watching, so please just send in your questions through the comment box. Thank you again to our partners, the, Des the Department of Trade and Industry, Design Center of the Philippines, and Fringe Manila for organizing this year's Design Week Philippines. With the theme Hyper Collaboration for a Better Normal, we hope to be able to explore how we can work together and take today's visions into the future and realize through the lens of design and designers. Okay, so before we officially, officially begin, here are some house rules and communication reminders. Feel free, like what I said, to type in your questions or comments in the chat box. You can submit your questions anytime and we'll answer them throughout the session as well as during the Q&A. Please also identify if your question is for a specific speaker, just so they can give you more specific answers as well. Our community managers will be curating the questions and sending them to us. Also, just a kind reminder to please be respectful of each other during the discussion. Don't forget as well to follow British Council social media channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at PHBritish at Brit underscore, underscore visual arts and at British arts. 
Okay, so we'd also love to hear your thoughts on today's session via social media. So please tag us and use the following hashtags. Hashtag Design Week PH2020. Hashtag Art Connects Us. Hashtag Platform Voices UK PH. All right, so I think now it's about time that I pass you on over to Nicola, who will be kicking off the discussion. Nicola? Hello to you all joining us online and to our fellow panelists. Today we will discuss how we can make cultural content accessible during this time. And I'm personally excited to hear from everybody on their insights on how the arts and culture sector has responded to the pandemic. The arts and culture sector is greatly affected by the ongoing health crisis. The majority of cultural institutions have seen radical disruptions to their programming, revenue and networks. According to the UNESCO report on museums around the world in the face of COVID-19, 90% of the estimated 95,000 museums closed their door during the global pandemic and more than 10% may never reopen. This prompted museums to transition to, from face-to-face -face digital setups, resulting in a massive expansion on online consumption of the art sector. Now that the world moves to a more virtual space, how do we ensure that we remain culturally connected despite current restrictions? How do we respond to the changing ways in which audiences connect through art and culture? Through this session, we will present British Council and the National Museum of the Philippines virtual exhibition Together Apart, Art World Voices That Connect Us Now, and how it's responded to the global crisis using an accessible platform. We will primarily explore the importance of collaboration and digital innovation in making cultural resources accessible during this time. Earlier this year, the British Council aimed to respond to the global health crisis and carry on with our organizational mission for, the cult for cultural relations. We created an inspiring social media campaign through platform Artwell Voices That Connect Us, which also supported our global initiative, hashtag Culture Connects Us. It was launched on the 18th of May, 2020, in celebration of International Museum Day, aimed to feature art leaders' voices and show solidarity at the beginning of the global pandemic. The National Museum of the Philippines, Dr. Labrador, a multidisciplinary artist and artivist, Raz Salvarita, are two of the 11 participating leaders in the campaign. In partnership with the National Museums of the Philippines, we further amplified the campaign's reach through the online exhibition Together Apart, Art World Voices That Connect Us Now, which, is now, which also serves to document the social media campaign. Featuring artworks from the British Council Collection and National Museum's Fine Art Collection, it presents a range of familiar feelings and perceptions from art leaders in the Philippines, the UK and other parts of the world, from anxiety to the need for solidarity. We will take you on a virtual tour of the exhibition later, where you'll see it resulted in unique pairings of the British Council's collection works that may not have otherwise been shown, together in dialogue with those from the National Museum of the Philippines illustrating the true spirit of cultural relations and shared narratives across the world as they bridge cut circumstances from times in which they were created to today's context. As with all art sectors during this global pandemic, the visual art sector has been, and in some cases is still forced to shut down physical presentations and activity. Due to the pandemic, many artists, organizations, galleries, and museums have been left with canceled shows and projects depleted workforces, cut revenue streams, whilst their network and audiences have been left with no physical access to artwork and professional support. However, almost immediately, we have seen great examples of innovation of the world of the visual arts international communities in creating and publishing an increase in digital content. This has included educational how-to guides and videos to support homeschooling from the Hepworth Wakefield to take exploring well, well-being through art. To vocal eyes who've been sharing through the weekly newsletter opportunities for the blind and partially sighted to continue to enjoy art and cultural heritage through digital and virtual platforms. And the Wising Art Centre who have created various online programmes to showcase the works of their artists in residence and other invited artists through live performances, virtual exhibitions and panel discussions. 
for some, the digital platforms and technology on offer have been, we have been using is familiar and a part of our everyday lives. For others, we could use this time to explore, develop new skills, and be creative in our development of new content to engage our current and new audiences and connect with them during this period of isolation. We have also seen an increase in the number of webinars to support the professional sector and individuals through training, conferences, mentoring, and network. And whilst this example of digital programs are vital to the future of visual arts programming and reaching a wider audiences, they are in addition to and should not be seen as a replacement to great exhibitions, artists, museums, and galleries put on. However, perhaps to understand the Together Apart campaign better, we will share with you a short insight into our global work in the visual arts, which includes the British Council collection. Then this will be followed by a quick overview of the work of the National Museums of the Philippines and its National Fine Art Collection. The visual arts team works with our colleagues and networks around the globe with an aim to share in the best of the visual arts sector in the UK and our collection also reflects it. The British Council collection was formally established in 1939. Since then, we have acquired over 8,800 artworks representing the best visual artists in Britain, including works by Lucian Freud, Girl with Roses, which I hope is familiar to you all. To Barbara Hepworth's Marquette, um, Marquette for Wing Figure, Henry Moore, Girl with Cast Pans, Eric Revillius's Rainbow Camouflage Ship, and to more recent acquisitions, Claudette Johnson's Seated Figure Number Two, Nicole Verma's Mood Wars, hashtag 10. Goshka Makuga's Make Tofu Not War, which is a tapestry to be seen through 3D glasses. And our first virtual reality piece, Lawrence Lex PlayStation. This resource has travelled extensively around the globe and is at the core of the visual arts programme. Whilst we have produced and collaborated on many physical exhibitions, in 2016, we started the programme Museum Without Walls. Not unlike the barriers that we are presented with today, the open call from, from which the Turkish curator Elif Kamalisi was selected from was originally for her to create an exhibition from the British Council, which would have been shown at a venue in Turkey. However, circumstances led to our colleagues in Turkey having to adapt and working with digital design consultant locally. And our first ever digital exhibition was realized. Our fourth exhibition was launched earlier this year which was curated by curators from Turkey, Ukraine, and Georgia, and included works from their retro retrospective countries. The design of each edition has been very different and has moved from a virtual gallery, which we would all recognize, including the gift shop, to storytelling to more experimental digital designs, which audience can navigate through as we see in the latest edition. Both Museum Without Walls and Together Apart show the capabilities and reach of digital and how adaptable and accessible resources is to us. And whilst we've been fortunate position to be able to continue our work during this time, it is important to stress that all the artists and arts professionals that are linked to the current programme or have been connected with during this time to realise our digital offer have been extremely generous with their time and resource and without their involvement, support and commitment to working with us, Projects like Together Apart would never be impossible. Now to share with us the National Museum of the Philippines work and its fine art collection, may I call on the D Deputy Director General for Museums, Ana Maria Teresa Labrador. Thanks a lot, Nicola. Um, I, I just want to talk a little bit about the National Museum, um, which is going to turn 119 years old in on October 29. We do have an encyclopedic collections of millions of objects, artifacts, and um, specimens. And um, we have three flagship museums in Manila and 15 museums throughout the country. So the National Museum's uh, fine arts collection is actually um, housed in the National Museum of Fine Arts, which is the old legislative building in Manila. It represents Filipino visual artists from the 18th century to the late 21st century, including national artists of the Philippines. And we have paintings, sculptures, um, architectural parts, drawings, prints, mixed media, and photographs. These are the types that we collect. Um, and it serves as a reference 
collection that contributes to an understanding of Philippine art history. These are made accessible to the public through exhibitions, publications, events, and programs showcasing the embodiment of artistic achievements and aspirations that constitutes a significant part of the nation's um, artistic patrimony. So we are still close to the public and uh, over the last seven months, we have had to make, um, have to make sure that people's jobs are secure and so we have been cleaning, we've been maintaining, uh, we're securing. We have been creating online programs with the hashtag museum from home um, uh, projects. And then we are also continuing to develop exhibitions. And um, these are being done because we also have to create content for the, um, um, the students who are actually doing blended learning at the moment. Um, they are uh, being, we are developing all these learning um, uh, programs for the de Department of Education. And if you can see this picture, we actually had um, to wait for six months for these crates of artworks by Filipino artists from New York to be able to come to, to us. And so we've been processing this. And at the moment we are planning uh, for this to be exhibited. During the Independence Day, um, uh, June 12th, we actually opened a physical museum uh, exhibition, but we couldn't actually have people around, so we developed a, um, a virtual tour of the exhibition. So it's about the, uh, the shell, uh, Placuna Placenta, that we've been using for windows of traditional houses and which, um, in which we also engaged art, uh, the artist uh, Gregory Raymond Halili to actually um, show his works that, uh, on which he paints, oil paints them um, yeah, in miniature scale. And it's been quite a, a significant um, um, exercise for us because we wanted to um, prove that we could uh, be a bit uh, more able to cope with the situation. So we um, really hope that we could be open soon, but in the meantime, we're still developing more exhibitions, physical exhibitions, and then we are now filming them uh, using the 360 uh, virtual tour formats, and so that people, it's, it's like an immersive type of um, online uh, exhibition. And so people could appreciate more of what we have. And we do get a lot of um, um, comments and uh, letters and saying that they do miss the National Museum. So we do hope that we are able to do that very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I look forward to hearing more on the work you've been doing and how you've had to adapt later on in the session. Um, so now let's move on to actually uh, what we're all here to see, which is our virtual exhibition. At the British Council, we aim to create opportunities and reduce barriers for everybody, particularly underrepresented groups. In, um, equality, diversity and inclusion runs through much of our work around the world to develop inclusive programs and projects that bring together people with different experiences and backgrounds. In developing the virtual exhibition, we wanted to ensure that the platform was easily accessible and simple to use for all kinds of our online audiences. We identified Microsoft Sway for this project, an easy to navigate application which, was accessible with, which has accessibility options for users with, with viewing disabilities. The accessibility options went hand in hand with the layout and design of the exhibition. Within two months, more than 5,000 visitors have viewed together a part from Japan, Turkey, the UK, the USA and Brazil, to name but a few. Here are the, U here are the UX considerations that we apply to the curating the virtual exhibition. Viewing flexibility. Sway can be viewed flexibly through different screens such as a desktop, smartphone and tablet with no installation required. It has alternative texts that can help people who can't see the screen to understand what's important in images and other visuals. Through alt text, the teams convey the content and the purpose of the image in a concise and unambiguous manner. 
hyperlinks. People can use screen readers sometimes. People who use screen readers sometimes scan a list of links. So we added links to further reading and multimedia related to the artwork, artists and featured art, art leaders. Text format. People with reading disabilities might have problems with italics, words in all capital letters and underlines. This is why we cautiously use these formats in select words and phrases across the platform. Accessibility view. The exhibition can be viewed in a simpler way by choosing the option that represents a vertical layout of the content. Currently, the exhibition follows a vertical layout that allows you to scroll from left to right. Navigation. Aside from coming up with guidelines on accessing together a part, our team produced an instructional video of how to navigate the exhibition. For better appreciation, um, here is the video released on our social media channels, which was featured on an, during an interview with CNN Philippines. Welcome to Together Apart, Artful Voices That Connect Us Now virtual exhibition. My name is Henry Palma from the British Council in the Philippines Arts Team. Through this video, we would like to give you a quick guide on how to tour the exhibition using the digital platform Microsoft Suite. We hope to give you the best user experience. Let's get started! On the home page, you will see three buttons on the lower right corner of your screen. Use the most left button to jump from one section to another. The exhibition has 12 sections. To navigate, use the middle and rightmost buttons to scroll right and left. You may also drag the bottom cursor left or right. Click on the image to view the full artwork. And click X located in the upper right corner of the screen to exit. To view the complete content about the artwork, click on the text. To exit, just repeat the same procedure. There are multimedia contents available across the exhibit. Feel free to watch the video on the page or you may view it in a new tab or window. There are also links to external resources. Just click on any hyperlinks to open the external links. It will lead you to another tab. You may also view the exhibition in a simpler way. Just over on the upper right corner of your screen, click the icon with three dots and select Accessibility View. This version presents a horizontal layout of the exhibition. Feel free to explore this page. To go back to the original layout, just click the same icon and click Exit Accessibility View. Easy, right? Touring the exhibition will only take 15 to 30 minutes of your time, depending on your pace. Once you're done viewing the exhibition, don't forget to sign our guest book. We would love to hear your feedback. For more information, just refer to the section on accessing the virtual exhibition. If you have any technical issues, you may email us at arts at britishcouncil.org.ph. Enjoy your visit and don't forget to tell your friends. Thank you. There are other innovative UX trends utilized in certain platforms to showcase cultural, con cultural content. But this virtual exhibition made us realize how crucial it is to respond to the changing ways in which audiences connect through culture. That adaptability and digital innovations enabled us to connect despite current restrictions. So I'm, now, I'm sure you're all looking forward to seeing the virtual exhibition together apart world uh, art world voices that connect us now. Anna and I will now take you through each of the exhibition sections, highlighting an art piece per theme. Feel free to ask any questions or share your views in the chat box during this tour. The current global health crisis has required people to remain at home and world, the world over in order to stay safe. However, this public health action has made one feel isolated, lonely, stressed and anxious. For others, isolation offers solace and comfort. Art leaders in the first section reflect on the different emotions that's being confined at home can evoke. 
Within this section, Ringo, Ringo uh, Bunion has selected the work Painter's Garden with Eli by David Dawson. Dawson was the assistant and friend of Lucian Freud, an artist in his own right who took various photographs of Freud at work and in his studio. This work in particular gives us a great insight into Freud's practice and his private surroundings. And as Ringo expressed, it presents this idea of sheltering within a safe space. And as voyeurs, we can enjoy this peaceful and tranquil scene during this time of uncertainty and reflect on the idea that isolation can be positive. Now, Anna will introduce us to sections of crisis of metaphor and transformation. Thanks, Nicola. So crisis in metaphor section, we try to look into, um, you know, sometimes we, we make, want to make sense of difficult situations by relating them to past experiences. The, the current global health crisis has been compared to World War II, an un unwelcome guest, a warning from nature. But with each crisis also comes opportunities for learning and gratitude. What have we learned from the past and what will we take away for the future? For this section, I actually chose um, Fermin Gomez's A Plea for Freedom from Fear, which was made in 1949. And it is about uh, what he's witnessed during the Second World War. And it's made out of uh, Plaster of Paris. So it was something that he did uh, con consciously. Um, and also because he, was a, a gifted sculptor. And this is a quite a tiny um, artwork. So a plea for freedom from fear depicts a wailing mother embracing her baby while two children hide behind her and a dead child lies at her foot. Completed four years after the Japanese occupation in Manila, this sculpture describes and depicts the anguish and fear felt by the mothers for her children who suffered and were abandoned during the war. After 70 years, a different war is being faced by families. Wailing mothers and orphaned children want to be free from fear brought about by the COVID-19, making the sculpture relevant today in this time of the pandemic. And it's interesting um, that Fermin Gomez actually um, went back um, at the out outset of the war, he went back to his hometown in, in uh, Northern Luzon where he actually set up a, um, a, a, a clog shop you know, for, for uh, wooden clogs, uh, where we, which we call bakya, and which, uh, on which he would uh, carve intricate um, heels for them. And he had several commissions later on, uh, church commissions in the 1950s, and then moved back to Manila uh, to work for the, uh, the National Waterworks and Sewerage Authority. Uh, where he became the, the resident artist. He was also invited by his former mentor, Guillermo Tolentino, who's a national artist, to teach at the University of the Philippines um, School of Fine Arts. And, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, it's this will to, to uh, be positive and to find ways. Um, artists have that, that capacity and uh, it's wonderful to be, to, to have this culture to remind us of uh, Fermin Gomez's will. And um, so the next uh, is actually about transformations. And um, the unprecedented disruptions can make us see things in a new light, presenting opportunities to reset and prioritize what's important to each and every one of us. Is it health, love, connecting with others and community? Is it a set of beliefs, um, principles and hope that may lead to positive change. In this section, we explore how art can be a vehicle for expressing personal, social, and political conviction. And for this, um, I chose to um, chose Nena Sagil's untitled work. Um, Nena Sagil was born in 1914 and uh, died in 1994. So this uh, is, is, was done in 1972 when she was already living in Paris. So in this untitled painting, orbs and circles sprawled all over the canvas is rendered in varying sizes and in tones of rose, black, red, and blue. 
The circles may symbolize humanity and the whole canvas, the universe in general. At the core of this work, the dark colored interlocking circles are seen to move closer to the white sphere, which uh, may, may symbolize hope and light. Given the global crisis that we are experiencing, Sagal's inscape and interest in mysticism illustrated in this work transforms into inter interpreting and the collective desire of humanity that for that light in this uncertain time. The circles and the orbs in the painting may also symbolize the collective desire of the whole world for the end of the global crisis. It's interesting to note also that Sagil, to, in order to redeem herself, um, her creative self, left the Philippines after the war um, and uh, stayed in Paris until her death in 1994, where she just really did uh, work and just, just, cre just ca came out with all these uh, uh, artworks that was really exploring her uh, inner self. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Anna. So finally, in Voices of Solidarity, we try to answer the questions, how do we use our individual voices to ad address collective hurt? And how do we stay together while keeping apart? This final section of the exhibition is a welcome reminder. Times of great change and loss call for cooperation and kindness. Here, Raz selected the work what We Don't Know Won't Hurt Us, a self-portrait by Delaine Labas. The central panel was originally created in 2006, relating to the political messaging of climate change and Roma rights. The artist is a prominent activist for the Roma community. However, following the death of Delaine's husband, the artist revisited the work and added the pink dress and cute rabbit mask to create what the artist described as a sh shamanic costume. This revisiting and recycling of the artist's works now points to the additional meaning of female shuma uh, shamanism, witchcraft, and the universal themes of personal loss and mourning. I will now ask Raz if he can tell us why he chose this work and why it's significant during this time. Thanks, Raz. Hi, Nicola. Um, this particular work uh, by Delaine uh, Lee Blas the title is really thought provoking because it states what we don't see won't hurt us and it's a self portrait and for me it fully resonated uh, with me during the time when the peak of the pandemic sometime in april may in the philippines it 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 was it it reflected so much isolation and knowing that the work was created between 2006 and 2018 i was wondering how the artist was in her own isolation with all, with all the, the, the past memories and also utilizing the artwork as a medium to translate and um, co-create a space where it can connect to the viewers. And, you know, being a, you know, a shamanic costume, it looks very tactile. Um, it's very fantastical as well. It's got a lot of um, death meaning to it, but then somehow because of the transference of energy through her ways of tapestry for me it fully um in in, 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 in capacitate me to to also look deeper into my own isolation during during those times and even until now so this is how i feel her work is so much powerful because it leaves us a question that what we don't see won't hurt us and um, we hope that in all of this we can see a brighter future in the next few uh, months ahead Completely agree. Thank you very much. Now, before we move on, um, if you're interested to learn more about the exhibition Together Apart, um, it also provides some fun and interactive resources. You can explore both the collections of the British Council and the National Fine Art Collection of the Philippines. You can check out resources of the arts and humanities, find more about the featured artists and artworks and the art leaders, and lots more resources available for you there. Um, we'll send the link to the virtual exhibition at the end of this session, so stay tuned. And that's it for the quick virtual tour. We will now move on to our panel discussion. So once again, um, welcome to our panelists, Anna Labrador and Raz Alvarita. 
So we're going to look at some case studies and examples to explore the different ways that the art and cultural sector has been heavily affected by the global crisis mm -hmm. and the importance of the collaboration and solidarity during this time. Um, we'll also be looking at some emerging trends and perception, uh, perspectives um, in the user experience and making cultural related content accessible. So uh, I guess the first question to Anna, is um, how is your museum adapting to the current um, conditions? You kind of touched upon it earlier, but maybe you can just right. on that. Yeah. Well, we had to pretty much, um, we, we weren't very active online, uh, except for some of our social media accounts. And so we had to pretty much um, adapt quickly and also get our staff to put out content, you know, and so it's, uh, it made us um, actually reach out more and um, that kind of bring out our, our exhibitions that may have been uh, in the um, in in the repositories or sometimes they're you know we don't notice much when they're in the exhibition so we've taken them um, and and presented them and give gave uh, to the public kind of a deeper understanding of what what are those and. Uh, we also um, had to learn how to communicate in plain language. You know, yeah, we have all these scientists and researchers here in, in the National Museum. And so we had to uh, make sure that they are understood and quickly understood at that. So, so um, as I mentioned also, we had to make sure that people um, kept their jobs. And so we, I have been continuing putting together exhibitions, um, even finding uh, funds from some of our partners so that we could engage with, you know, like photographers and and uh, videographers and so that, or even graphic artists so that we could have all these, um, them working. Uh, it's very important the artists are, are actually um, still, still doing work, otherwise it's, you know, I always tell my my staff that we we actually depend on artists, um, you know, for our professions, for our careers. So without artists, we will be nothing. So that's the main thing, and and so I think they understand that very much. Absolutely, thank you, and I couldn't agree more. Um, so I suppose the question then to Raz is, um, I suppose, what have you been doing during this time? And um, I guess as well, how important has it been for you as an artist to still be able to access the various different resources? Yeah, um, just 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 when the pandemic was starting, I was in the middle of a of an arts fellowship with a seed program uh, with the Medical and Cultural Hub and the British Council, and half of that fellowship was basically done online and. Uh, we were able to um, adjust and also um, facilitate these things to happen. Um, on the other hand, on my personal um, project, I happened to be uh, I happened to move to a new location. It's a rural village in the Philippines, and now I've started to because I got a grant from the Sea Junction. Um, it's based in Thailand. It's a small grant for staying. Uh, resilient amid the pandemic in Southeast Asia. So now I'm f organizing women farm folks and the youth sector as well to uh, co-create a uh, workshop for them so that they themselves can also uh, manage to um, utilize their time and also stay creative during this time. And it, that's for me as well as a community organizer and facilitator as well. Um, that's how I feel like I can contribute in this space where I am doing as well my personal art projects. Okay, great. Um, and I just wonder whether um, either of you wanted to expand on your kind of experience of, of working on this project, um, perhaps, you know, as, a, as an art leader and maybe the importance of um, your voices during this time. Right. Um, th this is a, quite an unusual project for, for us. Um, and it was nice, good that we were actually able to explore it um, because you know this people have their their handphones and they could all easily access the uh, 
the the, um, the, the virtual uh, tour. So it, it's also nice to have met uh, Ras online because I I didn't didn't even um, I haven't really met him. I've heard of of his work, but, but it's always good to see a, a face to the. Uh, to the works, you know, it's always yeah. important for us that it's not just the 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 object, but really the people behind the uh, the work. So, hello, Ras. I'm so glad to have <laughs> you. Hi, Dr. Anna. Okay, so we do we do a lot of projects on textiles. So um, I guess this is also going to be a good link for us with some of the artists that were involved or the art leaders that were involved. So. We could actually talk after this one and tell you all about our, our textile collection. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Raz, do you want to expand on, on that and your experience of the project? Um, the experience of the project, um, it's, well, it's, it's challenging most definitely because um, of, of the situation and also in terms of, of interconnecting with, with um, artists. It's, you know, I, I'm sure I, I know that the pocket of, of art collectives are doing their share, especially in the uh, provinces. And yet in terms of uh, projects connected with different organizations, it helps that it's moving um, forward uh, what they want to do during this time. But, but then it was um, uh, disrupted. But then now it's, you know, it's getting, um, gets, getting in the groove again, you know, adjusting to this um, time. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So um, I think we're just going to move on now to actually talk more in general around the arts and the culture sector, um, I guess, in terms of the forecast for the future and what that might look like. Um, so Anna, a question to you is how will museums in the Philippines adapt to stay relevant, um, do you think? Oh, we will have to do much more outreach work. Um, actually, before the, the pandemic, we have a, a touring exhibition that are in boxes, and they're focused on the um, biodiversity of the areas that they were going around. Um, but then we had to stop that. So I guess um, there will be, we will have to use uh, online online um, um, platforms and, and um, at the moment our, our relevance is focused on uh, programs for the Department of Education, um, mm -hmm. providing them with content and making sure that, uh, for instance, we'll, we'll be starting to do podcasts so that we could actually have all these materials that doesn't, wouldn't need um, um, connections, no uh, Wi-Fi connections, because it's it's fairly difficult here in the Philippines to to have all that. We have 15 museums all over the country, and so we'll be using that as a a, um, a venue for other more creative programs that we could do in terms of not just engaging with artists, but also actually doing some projects with them. And then um, there's also um, the possibility of um, developing citizen science, um, for instance, um, because we do have a natural history um, museum. And so um, there's been all sorts of problems, even if, you know, kind of the, of, 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 uh, the world uh, at the standstill. For instance, we've been having reports of um, turtles and dolphins being stranded. And it's because of all these plastics in, in the sea and the ocean. So, you know, th these things need to be worked on. And I think an interdisciplinary approach uh, with communities would make us uh, more relevant uh, in that way. That's great. Thanks yeah. very much. Um, I think I, we still have Raz. Um, <laughs> So, uh, Raz, I suppose yeah, the question to you is around actually independent artists, especially from outside capital cities, and how you can continue to share your work and for it to be seen. You touched upon this earlier a little bit about how you're working with with local communities. Um, mm -hmm. You can expand on that. Uh, um, I, I'd like to. Um, I'd like to 
to acknowledge the work of uh, the Viva X Con uh, here in the Visayas. It's basically the Visayas island-wide um, uh, visual artists uh, exhibition and conference. It's been on for the last uh, 30 years. It's the most sustained uh, arts um, binales in the Philippines. And uh, they're supposed to start this year, but because of the pandemic, they've been pioneering as well the work of uh, the virtual work. So it's amazing that somehow in terms of adaptability, artists can really co-create this space where they can utilize technology and um, online um, connections. Yet on the other hand, in terms of independent artists, I know in some uh, localities here in the uh, in the region that there there are pockets of artists in doing independent work um, collectively. Um, even in Cebu, there's a group of artists that's doing a seed bank program, but then utilizing creativity as well mm -hmm. for that. Um, and here in, the, in Iloilo, there's also a group here called the Lima Community where they uh, promote uh, mural artworks um, publicly again to still revive and um, put immediacy of creativity. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the public. So in terms of um, um, artists who are thriving with their works, I know that there are a number of uh, fundraising activities um, among other, among art galleries and art collectives. And it helps promote artists to really uh, continue the work and then um, channel it through this um, support system where it's a cycle of um, basically expansion of um, support, creativity, and um, uh, community outreach as well at the same time. So it's been challenging, but somehow we remain resilient in terms of our creative uh, processes and also being moved by what we have, where we are, and, you know, it's just grows where you are planted, you just blossom and flower. So that's how it is for us in the province. Great. Um, I just want to encourage the audience um, to please put any of their questions in the comments box and um, we'll get to them later on in the session. Um, so a question around, I guess, whether or not because of the current crisis and the some of the online work that you've been doing around whether or not you feel that your audiences um, during this time have changed at all. Um, and also how you've managed to maintain certain audiences as, you, as you've moved from a face-to-face -face, um, presence to more online. Maybe Anna, you can start. Yes, it's, it's a bit tough. Um, you know, I keep telling my friends that it's still a jolt when we, I go around and uh, do my inspections around uh, the galleries and also the laboratories that, but it's, it's really in the galleries where I kind of really miss um, visitors coming in and seeing them interact with um, our, our exhibitions. And so um, I, I think it's, it's really quite, uh, um, quite difficult for us to, um, um, I mean, we still ha need to have a physical um, um, exhibition because we do need to, like if we're going to do 360 um, uh, virtual tours, we need to actually have them on still. And, um, but we would like to be able to put more online. So we've been having, um, for instance, this unprecedented time to start kind of thinking about future projects and that, you know, the acceptance that, you know, we won't go back to what we were. Um, mm -hmm. We would have to do everything kind of blended and um, and thinking that we need to, you know, all the gaps that in our, the way we, we ran the museum have uh, been sharpened in a way. Uh, we've been kind of, uh, kind of grabbed by the collar and say, you see, you've not done this. And so, um, so we've been, we've been doing that and um, perhaps also to manage to, um, it, you know, like for instance, with our Department of Education programs, that to to instill also this idea that um, they can uh, young people can do all these um, creative stuff, no, even if their subject is on science. So we've been coming up with uh, coloring sheets uh, where um, you know we just put them on our social media, and they can download that, and they can also color. And then we talk about um, 
some of the um, specimens in our collection and why they're important in terms of biological diversity. So, so uh, we need to be more creative and we're trying to do that. And so it's always this discussions among us, <laughs> even, even here, we, uh, in, I'm still at work and um, we have to go, um, our meetings are online. And uh, um, so, so it's, it's, been, it's been also an issue, a challenge for the staff. Uh, we have to make sure uh, their physical health and mental health are also looked after. Um, they are parts of, in a way, the, the, uh, the arts um, kind of sector. And so we want to make sure that they, they survive this crisis too. And already we've been seeing some, some issues um, because you know, not everyone responds the same way to uh, being quarantined or uh, in a lockdown. Or, mm -hmm. And so I think art has that, that re really important role in terms of that kind of redress. And so when we were thinking about all these programs outside the museums for our audiences, I think we have to also look, look into our own. And uh, on October 30, we'll have an employee's day. And so they will be, uh, they will be encouraged to do a lot of creative stuff, um, even, even doing some TikTok productions <laughs> and we'll have a competition. So I think that's, that's also important to look into also our immediate communities and not just beyond that. And, and by that, I think in a way that will be more productive and they will do much more work <laughs> in terms of reaching out to a larger audience. So, so. Okay. Um, Raz, I'm interested in whether or not um, you feel perhaps your audience or those that you're engaging with has changed at all during this, this period. Um, yeah, well, well, in terms of, there's definitely like a big change for, for in terms of, of, of uh, connecting um, in terms of, let's like, say, exhibitions, for example, it's no longer face-to-face -face at this point. It's mostly online exhibitions. And uh, yet somehow artists are, you know, they're very creative. They utilize all social media uh, platforms and also even reconnecting with uh, fellow uh, creatives like musicians and theater artists, just, to, just so to support the sector as well. Because I know for a fact that a lot of our musician friends and theater um, friends are very challenged because you know they have to be out there to, to do their work and to do gigs and stuff. And um, unlike visual artists that we can stay in the, the studio and just paint uh, by ourselves. So um, in a way, it, it totally shifted Yet on the other hand, um, there are watch parties and uh, Google Meet and things like that that still somehow supports um, the creative sector in this in this time, um, and not just here in the Philippines. Um, with myself, for example, um, with the Seed Program, for example, it, it creates a, a, a an updated also uh, sense of way of. How oh, I'm sorry. I think we we. We lost Raz there. Um, so, Anna, I might just move on to the kind of user experience and, and, and accessing uh, content um, from a design perspective. Um, mm -hmm. um, so how, you've, you've touched on this before, I guess, how are you making culture accessible and available during this time? Um, any you know, specific campaigns? And I suppose as well, maybe you can you can talk around how you you might be overcoming these challenges where um, Wi-Fi internet connection isn't relative relative um, isn't right. readily available. Okay, this this month is actually Museums and Galleries Month, and we've had quite a few programs that uh, you know, of course, they took place online. Um, some of our our staff, for instance, in Iloilo, um, they run the National Museum, Western Visayas Regional Museum. They've been having every Thursday a, a, uh, an online uh, film, film screening of, um, it's a documentary on the uh, rice terraces in, in Panay uh, Island, in Antique. And so, you know, it's, it's been very, very challenging because um, um, they have as guests, um, 
uh, Marlon Martin, who was actually in Ifugao in Banao, in the northern Luzon, where they have the famous rice terraces. And, and you know, it's always this, you know, the, he, he would be cut in the middle of, of, of things. No? So I think it's, it's really, these challenges have made us more creative. I told my staff, maybe we should partner with um, the industry. And so maybe we could have uh, the, the better connections in that way. And, um, and perhaps, you know, as I said, maybe radio would be a good, good um, thing. And I've, I've always been a fan of the BBC World Service. And that's always been a, uh, like a companion for me when I would do my, my anthropology field work. And so it's, it's this, it's kind of start thinking about what, what could, could we do um, given that all these, um, you know, we have all these con con um, very contemporary um, uh, platforms, but then if something's not working, then what, what can we do in, in, on, on this uh, level? And I think it's, it's that, it's um, getting back to the basics and looking at available um, works, um, platforms. And so I've had a chance to meet up with some of the, um, you know, the local radio station uh, managers and also the, uh, um, I think the, the student um, run uh, radio stations in universities. And that's been really quite, quite interesting. And so uh, we, should, we should do much more of that. Perhaps not kind of, there, there will be no visuals, but, but still I think it's important that to connect even with, with voice and podcast can also be a w one one way of doing that and because you can you can download later when the wi-fi is stronger and then you can listen to it uh, uh, mm -hmm. later so it's 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 really uh not nothing prepared the, uh, us for this we've been always having drills about you know fire um civil strife um um flooding and uh the extreme weather, but nothing prepared us for the pandemic. And we were really caught unawares. It's like, um, you know, the rug being pulled from under us. And even if we, we try to really uh, do, do the work, it's still always kind of, um, we feel very insecure. I mean, from the, the experience that we've had in the past, that, you know, we're this big national museum and we can do this and that, and then suddenly, the, the usual um, ways that we engage with um, our audiences are, are, are really very, very challenging. And, uh, but we won't stop. We have to make sure. Um, the National Museum's um, um, goals and targets are not about revenue. It's really about engaging with people. It's, it's in our law. It's in, it's in our, our requirements from, from government because we're we're uh, mostly funded by um, the national government, and so we, we will we will uh, make sure that we could come up with something. And well, I'll probably email you if we found some creative ways of dealing with that. And I think this this kind of um, um, project that we've had with the British Council is a a good good um, learning um, um, experience for. Uh, also, my my uh, colleagues who who worked with me on on this. So thank you. It's really thank you. <laughs> it's been a great collaborative project. Um, yeah. So actually, I guess perhaps one final question um, from me before we, before we move on to the audience questions, perhaps to Raz um, is. What's your advice to independent artists and organizations who want to continue their work through digital engagement? Oh, yeah. Well, one thing is to really stay resilient because that's the strongest <laughs> um, energy that we need right now for all of us. Um, also, it's really to reach out with fellow artists to co-create a pocket of uh, support um, wherever you are. Um, you know, um, artists are opening them, themselves as well in terms of supporting mental health issues, um, you know, any, any support really that can um, help us stay afloat in this time. Um, also, it helps to look into um, webinars like this, virtual, um, virtual presentations and things, because it helps invigorate our sense of uh, curiosity and learning. 
which is really helpful also for a lot of independent artists to stay in that space of um, of, of tinkering some ideas and uh, possibilities as well. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, um, organizations like British Council and um, other organizations, even the, the, the National Museum of the Philippines, will really uh, continue to reach out to independent artists, um, most especially in the provinces, because uh, there's a lack of um, um, connections in terms of um, service like like this. I'm, I'm going out <laughs> every now and again because of um, interruptions, but truly it's, it's <laughs> so that's a that's a case in point, right? <laughs> yes, it's it's yeah. really really tough. Um, and um, I mean, we complain about connections here in Manila, and you can imagine what it's like um, outside of the of of you know the, like Manila, which is like the city center. And um, we, you know, we've been also wanting to find ways, like even just you know, being more more productive in terms of text messaging because sometimes that's the 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 way to to connect with other people. And um, we would like to actually um, come up with um, a program where we could have a um, um, limited access to to the collection, uh, like organize some artists who would like to see the collection in in not just here in Manila but also in our 15 museums uh, all over the country. And so we hope to be able to enable that so that that could be part of um, inspire, either inspiration or maybe criticism of, you know, what uh, a national museum like ours uh, are, are kind of practices that need to be questioned too. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, we would like to, to have that. We, I've been starting to, to do that with some artists who are, have been thinking of collaborating with us. Um, the way we um, connect with contemporary artists is that we want them to come up with projects um, that deal with um, certain aspects of, of our work, like for instance, our history, our buildings, um, our collections. And um, you know, it, we would like to incubate those, those ideas like for like two years and think about ways of Coming up with um, more more um, more creative um, um, in exhibitions. In fact, um, I mentioned a while ago about this shell exhibition. Um, Lacuna Placenta is really this. It could be a very thin shell that could be put in in windows, and that because we didn't have glass in the, for instance, 18th, 19th century, uh, or glass was very limited, and that was put on windows and. Um, we had someone like Gregory Ray, Raymond Halili, who put together, um, the, he painted, uh, he, he's a, he started off as a miniaturist. He would paint on like a postage stamp size um, um, paper. And then he, he later on, because his eyesight, he said, as he grew older, uh, couldn't see uh, as, as well as when he was um, doing art on postage size paper. Um, so he he started experimenting with all these kinds. And we're, we're so glad to have put up that kind of exhibition. And, you know, we'd be thrilled once we're allowed to open to, to show everyone what uh, wonderful work he, he's done. And so we have just, um, you know, like in on June 12th during our Independence Day, that's the time when we were able to um, actually put up a, a, a virtual tour of the exhibition so it's uh, so it's a, it's really been um uh, you know as i mentioned uh, quite challenging yeah but i guess from what you're saying is it's obvious and i think what i mentioned earlier in the presentation is that um physical exhibitions are obviously still very important still relevant and actually we can use digital um as as a supplementary um tool to in order for to to reach wide audiences to access right. The collections right um, but i think we both agree that that doesn't take away from the, the, the yes physical, the, the, the face to face presence um which i think we've all been missing during this yes. time yeah um, so, 
I think now we're sort of coming to the point where we're going to start asking questions from the audience. But I guess just to just to summarize from what from what we've been talking about during this time is um, we've actually adapted or, or you we've act, we adapted quite well to the to the to the pandemic and being able to um, use the digital platforms in very innovative ways to reach our audiences but more importantly we've actually been you've been able to increase um your your networks within the communities um through the various different um projects that you've been working with especially with in education which i think has been very important during this time um and also this idea of everything being sort of um interdisciplinary um and this this blended approach um, that everybody's been taking, as you say, from face to face to digital, and as Raz was talking about, forming these kind of supporting networks across the art forms um, has been very important. So it's not just about visual arts, but it's arts as a whole, um, and using those networks and that to um, to continue to reach out to the audiences. Um, and obviously, one of the challenges is internet so we can talk about digital platforms all day long but if people don't have access to <laughs> stable internet yeah. we have to think of other other ways to do this um right. and as you said you know radio or even through you know sort of some form of text messaging might be the answer going forward um yeah. so that's been great so i'm gonna open the floor now to the audience's questions um first one um I guess to you, Anna. Sorry, because uh, Raz, oh, Raz is online. He's just all Yay! Anyway, okay. Welcome back, Raz. Um, yeah. so, um, this isn't addressed to anybody, but um, are you open to civic community collaborations in setting up a wider network for art and design immersion for children? Um, perhaps, Anna, you can answer that. Um, we've been doing that to a certain extent, especially in the regional museums, um, because they they actually are set up for that sort of thing. Um, we have always worked interdisciplinarily, uh, like for instance, uh, we've been running a series before the pandemic of leaf art um, workshops with um, those who have been um, you know, they, they, they're part of the vulnerable communities, like those, um, um, those um, sight challenged or the uh, blind and also some of the, those with, you know, uh, physical challenges. And also the, um, we, have, we have really in the country have um, uh, out of school youth. And so we've been doing some, some programs with them, but definitely, um, we, we would like to, to do much more in terms of um, collaborations, especially at this time when we can't uh, be open to the public yet. Right. Um, I mean, Raz, if you do want to, to come in there, I mean, maybe that's a, a partnership between uh, the museum and yourself that may be yeah, a that's, collaboration. That's true. Um, um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, um, I, I'm, I'm starting up a... a basically a creative community here we call it the uh, barrio balangao creative community center uh, barrio means it's a small community and balangao in hiligaynon means rainbow so basically it's a rainbow village creative community um, focusing with the women farm folks and out of school youth and children as well um, we're, we're looking at developing something that's really specific for each sector on the other hand opening it up to um, other uh, collaborations within the region and um, I'm sure that you would uh, seek uh, advice also from the National Museum through Dr. Labrador oh, yeah. Yeah. in terms of resources and um, connections that would definitely be helpful for oh, us yes. here. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll email you immediately after this. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking forward. I, I have you. some ideas already, especially with <laughs> right. the style Yes. Yeah, that's great. Um, so question to myself. Um, is does the British Council collection have digital offers that local museum or galleries can feature? Um, so the answer is yes and no in a way. 
Um, we have, um, as you've seen from the presentation, um, you know, one of our sort of main digital offers is the Museum Without Walls. Um, the way we work is is very collaborative. So um, we don't necessarily have anything because uh, a pre-packaged, so to speak. The collection is available online um, for everybody to view. Um, and we also have um, a, an exhibition which potentially could be uh, viewed online as well, which is um, a joint collaboration with, with Lux, which is um, a video art organization within the UK. And um, so showing um, artists films um, and these have been adapted during this, this pandemic um, in order to make them accessible to um, an audience online rather than in the physical space. Um, so um, we are open to suggestions, should I say, and collaborations um, with any museums and galleries. Um, we can have those discussions. So, um, so next question is, um, perhaps to Raz, um, how do you think we can still capture emotions of pieces when museum and virtual tours come around? How do you think we can still capture? Oh yeah, uh, well, um, art is very evocative. So in terms of emotions, it's, it's right there, even just looking at the screen, uh, all the more if you see it for real. Um, even, you know, virtual, it's 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 the, the good thing about virtual in a way because it, there it gives people a space to pause to look at the picture the images and retain that kind of immediate response to the artwork so um i i feel in terms of capturing these emotions it's 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 there i mean as long as the person is open to immerse with the with the collections i'm sure definitely it will relay uh some some sense sensitivity um, and memories and something that will really provoke uh, a deeper kind of a um, contem contemplative emotion for for the viewers definitely so this you know this I, I feel like this will this will be it for now but um, definitely this is something to remind us that wow we are human beings and we can connect in, in whatever ways even virtually Great. Um, and just another question to you is what should artists be keeping in mind during this time? Did you hear did you hear that, Raz? Oh, oh yes. Oh well, okay. So things um, for artists to, sh to to keep in mind during this time. Um, well, one thing I would say um, make sure that they're healthy so that they can create works. Um, on the other hand, um, to this time, because there's, there's, I, I feel like there's been a number of opportunities coming in in terms of supporting artists, um, the British Council, um, some other um, organizations are putting it out there. And I feel it's, it's really for the artists who are at home with the capacity to connect online to check these um, websites, these um, uh, links, so that you know it can uh, make them uh, have a set. Uh, you know they can take the step further to engage with um, organizations um, for them to keep abreast as well of what's happening. Um, you know what's what are the updates, the the the, the happenings online. Um, but really, it's for artists to you know uh, create a personal space, a personal safe space. But on the other hand, create an open space for collaborations for. Um, the creatives all over. Yeah. Um, so, next question, which I think we touched on already, but I guess what can we say about those to those people who believe that art is meant to be seen on the ground? Um, I guess maybe I'll start answering that. Is um, I think that. Uh, you're right, art should be seen face to face, I think, in order to truly appreciate that. And um, I, you know, I'll, I'll let Raz answer that, but I think as an artist, he probably agrees as well, unless he's truly working in, in, uh, in digital. Um, but I think as we've um, demonstrated in the presentation today, um, it's, it's great at being able to reach different audiences, wider audiences, 
that may not feel comfortable walking into a, a museum or gallery space and obviously during this current time that's not been available to them as as, as a viewer um but i think digital has its place um to work as a supplementary additional tool tool for us um and you know for us the work that we do is all about reaching the audiences um, and that's the, that's the important thing. So whether that's doing it through a face-to-face -face exhibition or whether that's doing it through a digital platform, to me, they work hand in hand and are, you know, the, the, the tools that, that we have in order to, uh, to do our jobs. Really. And I don't know if you want to, to follow up on that. Uh, in terms of... Um of exhibitions, um, you know, as I mentioned, that we still have continued to um, maintain our, our um, physical galleries, and so they're they're all just there. Um, they're they're being cleaned and uh, made made sure that we, we're making sure that they're they're secure also. But we also have plans to. Um, because we have planned these exhibitions and we have the funds for it, so we've continued to, to do that. But now whenever we um, install an exhibition, we think about, you know, the design um, because it will be vi uh, a video, vi video captured. And, um, and so we have to think about color. And um, eventually we want to put together um, um, maybe an interactive uh, space where they could actually use the as a background for, you know, kind of like a selfie in, in terms of how people really want to kind of register their presence in in space, uh, in a certain space. So perhaps um, we could we could do more of that. Um, we do have uh, quite a number of um, plans for um, some touring exhibitions as well, and that had to. Uh, we had to put a stop to that. Um, at the moment, I'm installing virtually. Um, actually, because I couldn't, I couldn't go to that uh, space. There are about three exhibitions in the regions, and we managed to do that by getting suppliers, um, contractors who could do that for us. But you know, it's not not perfect. It's you know, sometimes I have um, some fears that. Of course, the objects might, uh, because I'm not there to to look to make sure that the objects are not uh, at risk. No, so so um, it's it's uh, been tough, but I think that once we open, there'll be more stuff to see and uh, encourage people to do that. So anyway, um, with the digital platform, I think it's very useful because we could we we do have now the capacity to. Um, to do close-ups and people can see them like what we've done with um, with with our pro project you know? mm -hmm. and to see them uh, up close and um, also to get more information so we've been putting all this information in the 360 that we're preparing to launch next week mm -hmm. so so that will be uh, you know the, the possibility we we're, we hope to put this 360 um, not just online, but we're going to um, put them in, in thumb drives that we can distribute to students uh, and, and maybe artists if they want them um, so that they can use them as tools for their uh, creative work. So, yeah. Um, so maybe just a follow-up question that we've had there. Um, what were some of the art pieces that you had planned to showcase um, before the pandemic? So I, I showed you that uh, picture where we're documenting all these artworks from crates. We're still going to push through with that. That's the um, you know, about 115 artworks from the Philippine Center in New York. Uh, but we, it's going to be a, a bit delayed. We were hoping to actually put that out last April. Um, but in February, there were already some issues and that kind of got caught. And so we had to wait like for six months for it to come here. And all the while we were really very nervous about that, uh, something happening to it. It's either in the warehouse of the uh, 
the shipper or that it's caught up here. <laughs> so it's it's all that no. And but we're we're pushing through with it because it's really worthwhile. Um, I think always making all these artworks because because in in New York it was just in the offices, mm -hmm. and so we want to be able to show that. Um, you know, before all these artists became national artists, they were doing all these things. Um, and it will be quite exciting. Again, we're planning to do a 360 uh, virtual tour uh, production for those things. So we're, we're pushing for all that. And even in Zamboanga, where we, it's in, the, in Mindanao, where we have been planning this exhibition where an actual boat is going to be suspended in in uh, from the ceiling so that's that's still happening um although you know i as i said i because i manage all those collections as you you will probably feel very nervous <laughs> that something might happen um uh, but uh we have we have staff who are, are really great and uh who, who would like to also have some things going on because uh, all of us we just miss uh, our audiences. We really miss uh, the the face to face encounters. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's uh, that's um, been 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 also tough for us. Yeah. Um. So, question to Raz. Um. Perhaps you can highlight some uh, um works of art that have been um created out of the pandemic and what struck you the most about these 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 works maybe maybe even uh, talk about your own um anything um any works you you've been creating yourself during this time oh uh, yeah well most definitely the masks were the masks are still um you know out there it's you know a lot of artists have been creating very funky masks functional masks um and then eventually it's become an icon for a lot of um, paintings and uh, um, anything really, you know. So, so I, I have one artist friend here. Uh, her name is Rosa Zerudo. And for the past how many days um, during the pandemic, like early days of the pandemic, she was just, you know, creating all these masks and um, um, gears inside her house and making it up, you know, all over her. It's just like a, basically just it's like a, it's a performance art at the same time. So it's really utilizing digital right. um, space to be able to project this um, isolation, this frustration. But uh, at the end of the day, there's a statement that comes out from it. And I, I, I would say it's really the mask that at this point for me becomes this iconic art piece that a lot of creatives are um, innovating and um, making, making it really like a statement that um, at the end of the day, we are here to be staying strong and resilient and doing the work that we do, which is creating, yeah. Um, okay, so I think the, the final question is uh, perhaps for all of us to, to perhaps end with, um, is what do we think about the current art and culture scene? Um, maybe Raz, you can answer this first. All right. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I, I came from, I was in the middle of a fellowship with uh, Southeast Asia and Delta. Um, it, it, so somehow when it all, when the pandemic started, I, I know that there are big events that were caught in the middle. Um, some are, some some plans are for, for, for next year. So somehow, you know, people can kind of, uh, create the space to maneuver and shift into something innovative. But in terms of the uh, current art situation, I know that in Mindanao, there is the uh, Mindanao Arts um, happening, Arts yeah. Festival happening, mm -hmm. which for me is uh, really good and enlivening the, the, the region. And also in the Visayas, we have the Viva XCON, which will start next week um, opening, and then it will have a monthly virtual uh, talks until eventually next year in July 21, 2021. Hopefully that they can really gather and, you know, um, celebrate um, this um, festival. And um, and yes, it's, it's very challenging, but somehow I know that uh, a lot of artists also are shifting towards more digital, um, digital works. 
in terms of uh, especially with the musicians and even performance artists utilizing uh, film um, to showcase their pieces um, in their isolated space. So I feel that we, 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 we're we hanging, um, we're staying afloat and we, we would really hope that we can, you know, s survive this uh, pandemic with a much broader sense of, uh, of, of, of attitude towards co-creating a uh, community where art is celebrated as a tool for transformation. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's good. Um, same question to you, Anna. Well, we would like to use this time. Um, I think it's we have had um, an unprecedented kind of um, opportunity to start thinking about things that we might be be able to do better, and um, because we have to actually make sure that. Um, the artists and our heritage are still, you know, uh, vi as vibrant as ever. And the artists won't, of course, um, um, let that go um, because, you know, there's that, that impulse. But um, as I tell my, my staff, you know, we're very lucky. Uh, we're still alive and we're doing all these things. And let's make sure as the kind of support um, uh, system of um, the arts and culture scene that we we have to to make sure that this this is uh, that they, they are able to to produce and have kind of like the uh, framework uh, for them to keep um, doing their work. So I think it's it's um, I mean you know I'm glad that Ras talked a lot about um, what they've been doing and that um, all is not lost and people are still really very optimistic. And I think it is, it is a, a, a wonderful period to be able to think uh, through certain um, things that we could do better and work uh, together. We have been thinking about, for instance, uh, co-curation -cur projects with um, a lot of the indigenous peoples here. We've tried that with one or two groups and we've done really quite well because um, you know you, you were asking about relevance of the museum and I think that's that's the thing but I remember uh, engaging with uh, one of the um, young young men who came around the museum um, to help us understand what all these objects are uh, that c comes from their their, um, um, their their community and then you know and then he proceeded to ask me, you know, you take so uh, uh, so you take care of our our objects, our, our things that come from our community so well. But who who will take care of us? You know. So, you know, I, I've always uh, that hasn't left me. That was five years ago, because I didn't have easy answers. You know. I mean, mm. you know, it's it's very humbling as well. And I think uh, we as um, people working in the, the support network uh, for, for artists and uh, the cultural uh, workers, we should really find ways to answer these things um, because without, without artists, uh, we, we really, you know, I mean, as a museum wouldn't really be here. So, mm -hmm. or our careers would, would never flourish. <laughs> we build our careers on uh, the works of artists or those uh, communities that produce art and uh, you know cultural uh, all these cultural expressions especially intangible heritage so uh, it, it's it's a good time to reckon um, how how we can do things better absolutely agree I think that the people uh, uh, is the most important um, and I guess just to, just to summarize for me I guess this time has been um, for us a time to kind of pause and reflect on on what we're doing and why we're doing it um adapt to the changes that that we faced um but also i think that the arts and culture sector has been very resilient during this time and i think they will be going forward um in that we've managed to create as I say, various different platforms on which we can work. And if we are faced with, you know, further closures, um, you know, for short short periods, 
um, again, we can still still be working and engaging with our audiences. Um, so, you know, I think it's been great. So, just finally, would like to thank you both uh, for joining me today. Yeah. I think it's been a great discussion. Thanks to the audience. Yes. And um, here in uh, ends our conversation for today. So thanks very much. Hey, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you so much um, thank you for so sharing much, your ideas. Yeah. 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 I will keep in touch. Yes, definitely. I'll email you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nicola, Dr. Labrador, and Raz for that very insightful discussion. I surely learned a lot and I hope our viewers did as well. So before we close our session, here are just some reminders. First of all, we would love to hear your feedback. So we're sharing the post-event feedback link in the chat box and it will only take 5 to 10 minutes of your time. So let us know what you liked about the session or what you want to hear in the next one. Secondly, if you would like to know more about the virtual exhibition and explore learning resources on the arts, please feel free to visit Together Apart through the link also found in your chat box. Thank you everyone for coming. We'd like to thank again Dr. Labrador, Raz, and our moderator Nicola, Design Center of the Philippines, and their digital events team and all the participants of sh for sharing your stories and positive energy today. Once again, this is Mia Fortugaleza and it's such an honor for Pineapple Lab and Fringe to be part of this year's Design Week Philippines Celebration 2020.